As we heard, Netanyahu's pledge to annex areas the Palestinian Authority wants for a future state created an uproar. On the ground, it's a complicated situation. But politics aside, here's a story we did a number of years ago about what the Bible says about the West Bank. Most of the world calls it the West Bank, but the Bible gave it a different name. We find it in the Bible that it's not called the West Bank, although it is on the west bank of the Jordan. We know it as Judea and Samaria. On the hills of Judea, Samaria, the Jewish people were born, and that's where it all started. That's where Abraham walked. That's where Isaac and Jacob lived. That's where Jacob slept and had his famous dream. This is the modern day community of Bethel, named after biblical Bethel, the house of God. It may not look ancient, but here, 4,000 years ago, the Bible says God appeared to Jacob and promised this land to him and his descendants forever. Jordan took over the West Bank following the 1948 Israeli-Arab War. About 20 years later, Israel regained control during the 1967 Six-Day War. 1.6 million Palestinians and 350,000 Israeli Jews live here. Now this area, known as Israel's biblical heartland, could be the future Palestinian state. This is Highway 60, the main West Bank thoroughfare for both Israelis and Palestinian Arabs. But Dean Bai says it's much more. It's probably one of the most amazing roads in all of history because God met with his patriarchs. He met with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He covenanted this land there. Along this road, Jesus met with a Samaritan woman. It's along this, this, this road that, uh, that he declared to her who he was. Some biblical highlights along this road are present-day Jewish communities. They include Jerusalem and Shiloh, home of the first Jewish tabernacle. This Israeli park is near Anatot. According to the Bible, this is where God told Jeremiah to buy a piece of land and bury the deed in a clay pot as a sign the Jewish people would return to the land. He says, I want you to buy from your uncle uh, a piece of land in Anathoth, and would you do it up legally with a seal and a deed and a title, and would you put it in a clay pot so it will last a long time? Despite the significance, you won't see many visitors. That's because many West Bank cities are under Palestinian Arab control. In fact, the only controlled areas frequented by tourists are Bethlehem and Jericho, the oldest city in the world. Other sites under dispute include Rachel's tomb in Bethlehem and the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron, where Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their wives are buried. While some Israelis would be willing to swap Judea, Samaria, and this biblical heritage for peace, Naftali Bennett objects. The source of the Bible is here. If, God forbid, we uproot ourselves, there will never be peace. They'll say, man, these Jews don't feel any connection, so how about just wiping them out of this country altogether? If we're not in Jerusalem, if we're not in Hebron, if we're not in Bethel, we won't be in Tel Aviv. Bai says it's up to Christians to take the side of God. I think God's plan and His purposes was that Israel would allow the stranger to dwell here, but he's, in, he's given this inheritance to Israel. He's given this to Israel to be the steward of this land. At least we can do is respect God's choosing.